Um, IT Heavy Hit is, is a chance for people to do what I did, which is a journey of um, self-discovery and also going from fat to fit. Back in 2011, changed jobs and used to be pretty big. I would say probably clinically obese. And then I used an opportunity, uh, a neighbour at the time was a cop in Upper Hutt and he'd taken part in the police versus fire service uh, boxing fights. And he said, oh, well, we're doing the fights for 2012. Why don't you come down and sign up? You want to get fit, come and do this thing. And I'm like, yep, okay, come and give it a shot. It's way outside my comfort zone. Never been through anything like this before, so let's give it a go. Um, I went through the whole process and I lost 23, 24 kilos over the fight camp. Um, ended up with a fight at the end of the year and it was just a fantastic experience. And at some point in time, I just had that, that light bulb moment and that, that link clicked between physical and mental well-being. So I did the fight. And then if I, if I go back a few months and I'm going through the fight camp and I'm thinking, why isn't there something on in Wellington for people that, that want to do what I do? So there's always, there's tradies fights and there's police or emergency services fights, but there's nothing for, um, for geeks. There's nothing for nerds, nothing for people that work in IT like me. That, and then going through the process, I'm thinking, well, this can't be that difficult. You need a hall, you need some teams. How hard can it be? Um, it turns out it's pretty complicated. It's a pretty complex thing. The following year after my fight, my boxing coach took his own life, Doug, um, and that was a real game changer for me. That was a sudden, actually, no, I need to do this. I need to do it for a mental health or a, su a suicide prevention cause. Uh, and that was the lead into that. So I um, hooked up with a couple of people that were involved in the show that I fought on. A guy called Mark uh, Hampton who runs MTI, the Muay Thai Institute in Wellington. And the idea was I'm just going to take your format and I'm going to rebrand it and make it something else. Uh, and then Robbie Martin who ran what was Petoni Boxing out there, now Martin Degnan's Boxing down in Lower Hutt. I went to see him, I said this, this is what I want to do. I want to run an event where we have two teams. We split them between these two camps. We have one in town and one in the hut. And then the train and the work off. And then around about uh, four or five weeks out, we'll get together and we'll match everyone up and we'll have this big super fight. Um, and that's, that's pr pretty much the principle of the whole thing. Four years ago, Doug McClay was a boxing trainer. He was training other corporate fighters. He took his own life four years ago. So six years ago, Mike Gores approached me and said, hey, I want to raise money for your charity. Uh, I said, how are you going to do that? He said, a boxing uh, match. Now, our only experience with boxing before this was another organization who said, hey, we want to raise money for you. We've got a sellout event. All we need from you is t-shirts. We didn't have any t-shirts. Cost us $585. We fired it off to them. He contacted me on the Monday. He said, what a great event. It was huge. It was a sellout. I went, I need a, he said, I need uh, some bank details so I can deposit the money. I went, yeah, cool, how much was it? He said, $137. I was like, oh, so this whole event costs us 400 bucks. Awesome. So when Mike approached me, I was just, um, fair to say, skeptical. Um, and then he wanted me to fly to Wellington. I'm like, how much is that gonna cost? And then he wanted me to fly my team to Wellington. How much, and book in hotels, and I was like, wow, this is, and um, then he presented us with a check for about $30,000 in year one and that was a game changer for us. That really changed everything. Mike Dawes got in touch with me and he, he just explained the program to me and, and what the money goes to and what the cause is for. And so I just, I just jumped on it with two feet. I went all in and uh, yeah, just to take these people because I know how much it's helped me and helped the people around me. I heard about what was going on and I heard uh, Dan and Shane were getting involved. Those guys explained to me how they were helping coach and how they were bringing some beginner people through for their first fight. I was definitely supportive of the cause and supportive of them and what they were trying to do as well. The process for heavy hitters is a little bit different to a, a number of corporate fights that, that we see around the place. Say, for example, we want 15 fights. We don't take 30 people and then just say, here's our 15 fights, and then they go off in two separate directions. We take on a large group of people, so we try and start with up to 100 people, and then we split 50 into each gym. And then the coaches really work with each other, so they've got open communications between the teams. Uh, they also visit each other's gyms as well to see uh, each other's fighters sparring, so there's no surprises. On top of that, we have compulsory headgear, doctors sign off and certification before each fighter, uh, blood tests, and we get the officials and the referees involved early on as well.
So in the last six years, IT Heavy Hitters has, has given us close to half a million dollars. Most of that money covers infrastructure costs, and by infrastructure costs, we don't have a big office block. Um, our office is a huge office in South Auckland called My Kitchen. Um, our staff, uh, my wife, myself, our factory is my garage, so we've got no cost, but it covers travel. It covers uh, accommodation, it covers food. It goes to um, our Youth Ambassador Program. We have now just formulated uh, a Youth Ambassador Trust Board. Uh, so I'm a drug addict, uh, I'm an alcoholic. Yeah, I am, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, I, well you can ask questions later, we'll get to that. And um, I've suffered from depression for most of my life. <laughs> Money's good, right? The money that goes to the cause is great because they get to do the good work that they do. But actually seeing people actually go and do the same journey that I went on, and being in a, not so much a dark place, but you know, just having that go home, drink beer, early sedentary, and actually the light bulb moment clicks where actually there's more to life than this. And there's a bigger community and a bigger family of people they can get involved in. And um, success motivates success. You know, you get one person who has a, um, has a good experience at this, and then he goes out and tells someone else, or they tell someone else, and it, and it, and it spreads. And that's pretty much how we've, we've built over the last couple of years. I will be eternally grateful to Mike Dawes and IT heavy hitters for choosing us. He didn't have to come to us. I don't know why he came to us, but um, it's, it's been a, a game changer, an absolute game changer. It's given us a voice. Our organization is about attitudinal change, positive attitudinal change. We don't focus on crisis, we focus on changing the culture. Rather than putting the pressure on people in crisis to reach out for help, what we're asking is people who aren't in crisis, what are you doing to help your friends reach out? What are you doing to help young people and make it okay for young people to ask for help? That's what we're about.